Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to make this fabulous, chunky, oversized striped sweater. It's knit in the round from the bottom up, and then we separate the front and the back for the armholes, and then seam the sweater at the top, add this amazing chunky collar, and then we knit the arms in the round. So join me as I walk you through step by step exactly how to make this fabulous sweater. All right guys, I'm gonna go over everything you need to knit this pullover. I used this Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick 100% Recycled Polyester Yarn. Um, and it is considered a size six super bulky weight yarn. There are 223 yards or 204 meters per each skein. I used two different colors and I used just over one skein for um, each color. So color one, you will, you need more color one. So I used, um, I don't know, maybe a skein and a half, skein and a quarter for my primary color. And then the secondary color, um, I used just over one skein. So if you're using this yarn, I would just recommend getting two skeins of two different colors if you're going to stripe it and construct it the same way I did. Um, all right, so adjust, you know, if you use a different yarn with different skeins, just adjust and know that one skein is 223 yards and 204 meters. All right, so that's yarn. You will need a tape measure for measuring how long things are as you go. Um, you will need some scrap yarn to put stitches on when you divide for the front and the back and then when you work the neckline. So make sure you have some scrap yarn handy. You will need a pair of scissors. You will need two stitch markers. I recommend having stitch markers that are two different colors. You will need a tapestry needle to weave in ends and to help you move stitches onto waste yarn. And then now I'm gonna go over the needle sizes. So I used US 13 9.0 millimeter knitting needles, and I used three different sizes. So I cast on using 36 inch circular knitting needles. Here you can see US size 13 9 millimeter knitting needles. So this is the 36 inch. So this is the longest length. So you're going to cast on with that because we're going to be working from the bottom up. So you'll have lots of stitches. So you'll use your longest needle for that. Um, then I used a 24 inch nine millimeter US 13 circular knitting needle to knit the collar in the round. And then I used a 16 inch nine millimeter knitting circular needle to knit the sleeves. If you don't have a 24 inch, you could just use the 16 inch to do the collar. But those are the three different lengths that I used to make this. So those are the things that you will need to knit the pullover. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little time to tell you guys how the sweater is constructed so you know how we're gonna be making it. And just having that big picture helps you understand how you can modify it if you want the sizing to be a little bit different. So basically, it's constructed from the bottom up. We cast on stitches from the bottom and um, we're gonna be knitting in the round for about four inches. Knit one, purl one, one by one rib in the round for four inches. And then we knit about one inch of this first color four inches of the second color and four inches of this first color. So basically each stripe is about four inches. The ribbing is four inches and the collar is four inches as well. So I'm trying to keep it easy. If you want to modify the length of the sweater, um, you can modify it from the underarm, right? So five plus one plus four plus four is 13 inches from the underarm. All right, so it measures 13 inches from the underarm, and because we have two stripes for the armholes, the armhole is eight inches. So if you want to increase the armhole size or decrease the armhole size, you can do it at the top a little bit. Or if you wanted to change the dimensions of the stripes, you could do that as well. So there's lots of different ways you could do it. The sweater from the top to the bottom then measures 21 inches. So you might wanna try on a sweater of yours um, 
a favorite sweater of yours and if you like that length, if you like how it fits overall, you can use that sizing for reference. Same thing, um, let me just go over the sleeve here. We have three stripes of four inches, so it's 12 inches to here and then I did a little over an inch, about an inch of um, the second color and then four inches of ribbing. So that's about 17 inches. Now, if you make the sweater smaller, you're gonna need to go longer on the arms. If you make the sweater wider, you're gonna need to go shorter on the arms. So just keep that in mind as you make yours. So this is 17 inches from the underarm to the end. Now let's talk about width of the sweater because that is what's gonna help you figure out how many stitches to cast on. Okay, so the overall width of the sweater is 24 inches. So then it is 48 inches across. It is meant to be a bit cropped and it's meant to be very oversized. So I am about a 36 inch bust. So with a 48 inch circumference, that's a 12, that's 12 inches of positive ease. Positive ease is the amount of circumference larger than your bust size. Negative ease would be smaller than your bust size. So this is meant to have a lot of positive ease. I would say go anywhere from about, you know, 10 to 14 inches of positive ease. You could go eight to 14 inches. You could go a little less if you wanted. Um, so my gauge is 10 stitches for four inches. So you're definitely gonna wanna do a swatch and make sure you're close to a similar gauge um, so that these measurements will apply to you. So I have 10 stitches for four inches. So I knew I wanted about a 48 inch circumference. So I just wanna show you my calculations so you can figure out how you want to do this yourself. All right, so let me zoom in here. So, Basically, um, 10 stitches for four inches is my gauge, okay? So I'm solving for X. I'm trying to figure out how many stitches then I would need for 48 inches. So X is 120 stitches. That's how I figured out how many stitches to cast on. Now I've done some of the math for you already. I suggest going in increments of eight, either under or above that 120 stitches. That'll help divide, making dividing for the front and the back and creating the neckline a little easier with even number of stitches and things like that. So I would suggest either casting on 96, 104, 112, 120, 128, 136, 144, or 152 stitches. And here are the finished measurements with those stitches. So if you cast on 96 stitches, that'll get you about a 38.5 inch bust. I have rounded to the nearest half inch. So I would try to figure out what size you wanna make according to these measurements. And just to give you a reference how I figured out, once I knew I was doing 120 stitches for 48 inches, this is kind of how I worked backwards to figure out how many um, inches the circumference was gonna be once I changed the stitch count. I'm showing you this just to kind of give you kind of the behind the scenes of how I grade patterns. And it's also helping you figure out how many stitches you wanna cast on. So basically, because we know our gauge is 10 stitches for four inches, um, and we have 96 stitches, we're trying to solve for how many inches. 10 divided by four is 2.5. So basically, I to figure out how, um, how many inches 96 stitches is, you just divide 96 by 2.5. So 96 divided by 2.5 is when I'm rounding to the nearest half inch equals 38.5 inches. So I've done all these calculations for you so you can figure it out and I also just wanted to show you how it's done in case um, you ever wanna design your own sweater and need to figure out grading or you want to customize this even more. You can go below this in eight stitches or you can continue to go above this and cast on, you know, 160 stitches. Um, but that's just the math, that's how I figured it out. So, figure out how wide of a sweater you want. Again, this is meant to be, to fit. Very oversized 
Again, you might want to try on an oversized sweater you already have to figure out um, a width that you're comfortable with, but that is how I calculated um, the amount of stitches. So once you've figured out how many stitches you're going to cast on, um, you can move forward with the cast on. All right, so I'm going to move forward with casting on 120 stitches. All right, so I'm going to cast on 120 stitches using the long tail cast on method. I've got my longer circular needle handy. I've got a stitch marker handy. And because we're doing the long tail cast on method, we're gonna need to give ourselves a really long strand of yarn to cast on with. So I normally like to, to figure out how much yarn I need. I wrap my yarn around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times to kind of give me an idea of how long ten, I'll need for ten stitches. So I'm because I need 120, I am going to do um, repeat this length for another um, 11 sections for 12 totals. 12 times 10 is 120. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Again, very rough, but so we're at the end of that. And now we're going to tie a slip knot and we can just tie a slip knot by going like that. I'll do that one more time. Loop the yarn over, pull through, and grab the yarn. All right, so we're gonna slip the slip knot onto our needle. We're gonna hold that long tail of yarn we just measured out in front of us. We're going to grab the needle and the yarn by putting our index finger and thumb through. Make sure that long tail is in front of the thumb, and we are gonna go under the yarn on our thumb and over the yarn on our index finger and pull through. So now I have two stitches cast on. Three, four, five. And make sure you're not pulling too tight here. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, so I'm gonna continue on for 120 stitches. You should continue on for the same amount if you are knitting the same size or adjust accordingly. I will meet you back here at the end of your cast on stitches and show you how to join in the round. I've casted on 120 stitches. Um, I actually have a ton of yarn still left on my tail, so I'm gonna snip this a little bit because you don't wanna um, grab it and start knitting it by mistake. So I'm just gonna snip that. And then we're gonna want to join our stitches in the round here. So um, you're gonna wanna make sure the stitches aren't twisted. So I like to kind of lay everything down flat and have the inside um, the bottom of the cast on all inside of um, the circular needles here. So then to join in the round, you're gonna wanna slip the stitches to the end here. And there's many different ways to join in the round. This is one of the ways I like to do it. I just like the way this looks a little bit more. You're gonna wanna slip the, la the first stitch on the left needle over to the right hand needle and then lift the last stitch over that slip stitch you just slipped, okay? And now we're gonna wanna twist that stitch, okay? You can put the marker on now, and then we're gonna start our one by one rib. So we're gonna knit into this first stitch, and then we're going to purl. Bring the yarn in front and purl. Move the yarn to the back to knit. Bring the yarn in front to purl. So you're gonna wanna work this one by one rib 
all the way around and you're going to want to continue on until you have about four inches knit four inches measured from the cast on edge to where you are with the work so keep knitting all the way around in the one by one rib for four inches so you knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches All right, I'm nearing the end of my first round and you should always end on a purl because we're casting on an even number of stitches. So then you're gonna wanna slip the stitch marker and begin the knit one, purl one again. So we knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. The purl stitches are the ones with the bump. And you continue in this fashion, just slipping that beginning of round marker every time you complete a round. And you can see our ribbing start to take place. So continue around until you reach about four inches. And then we will move on to the body of the work. All right, so I am now towards the end of my bottom ribbing. I am at about four inches of ribbing on the bottom. So for me, that was about 14 rounds. Um, so you might have around the same or you might have a little more, a little less, depending on your gauge. But we are at the end of the ribbing and then we're gonna continue on with this color, color one, for approximately one more inch. So I am gonna go about three rounds. I know that about four inches, or I'm sorry, I know that about four rounds equals one inch in my gauge. So I'm gonna go one round short of that because when you knit, on your second color, you're gonna be dropping one more round off. I'll show you. I know that can be a little confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. So basically, you're gonna to wanna to go, if you're gonna, if you are knitting the same length from the underarm of the sweater that I am knitting, you're gonna to wanna to add a little less than an inch of color one. Now, if you wanna go shorter, you can move right to color two right now. If you wanna go longer than the 13 inches, you can add more than one inch of this first color um, after the bottom ribbing. So I'm just gonna continue on. Um, I am just going to knit all the way around now for three rounds. So we just did knit one, purl one, now we're just knitting every stitch all the way around. So I will meet you back here after I've completed three rounds of knitting of this first color. Um, and then I'll show you how to join the yarn for the second color and start that second color. Now is also a good time to mark the other side of your work. So we've got one stitch marker here for the beginning of the round and it's good to mark the halfway point so we know where to divide for the front and the back. I would suggest getting a different color stitch marker to mark it. So because I've cast on 20 stitches, I'm gonna work across 60 and place a stitch marker. So I'm, I've worked across two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23. So I'm gonna go to 60 stitches and place a stitch marker. I'll show you how I do that. All right, so I've knit across 60 stitches. So I have 120 stitches, so the halfway point is 60. So whatever number you've cast on, you're gonna wanna work across half of your stitches. So just divide the total number of stitches by two. And then you're just gonna wanna place a different color stitch marker so you know which one is the middle one and which one's um, the beginning of round one. So then just keep working all the way across. So I will meet you, meet you back here again once I've finished knitting three rounds of this color one, and then we will switch to color two. All right, so I have knit about three rounds, um, just under an inch, and now I'm gonna add my second color, this cream color. Um, and just know that even though, um, so I've gone just under an inch because I am going to knit, when you add your second color, 
you're gonna be knitting the stitches that are on the needle currently off, so it'll actually be longer than three rounds, it'll be four rounds of stitches. So um, again, just wanna reiterate, this is the time too where if you wanna add more length to the sweater, you can continue on as long as you would like. If you wanted, um, maybe you're already on the second color because you wanted to make it shorter. But all I'm gonna do to add the second color, I'm gonna knit to the end, slip in my marker, and I am just going to simply start knitting with my second color. And I am not going to cut my first color. I'm gonna show you every couple of rows how to twist the yarn so you carry the yarn up the side so you don't have to cut um, the yarn. It also helps to prevent gaps. I'm also gonna show you how to um, prevent the stripes from having jogs. Jogs are when you um, switch colors and you kind of get this like uneven step in the yarn. So you're gonna wanna knit across the first round um, with this first color. I'm gonna meet you back here towards the end and I will show you how to prevent having jogs in your stripes, all right? All right, so I'm nearing the end of my first round with my second color. And so when you get to the end, you simply are going to want to, and it can be a little wonky when you first join your color here. You might need to pull the yarn back a little bit, but don't pull it too tight. You're gonna simply want to just slip the first stitch of this second round. And you're gonna wanna make sure you slip it purl wise. So insert your needle as if you're gonna purl and just slip the stitch and you keep knitting. Now that's the only time you do that. You just do that at the beginning of the second round and this helps to prevent that jogging look. I'll show you once I knit a few more rounds but it just helps the work look a little bit more even. So continue knitting. I am gonna knit probably two or three more rounds and I'm gonna show you how to carry the yarn up the side. We're just gonna simply twist the stitches as we go. So we have to knit about four inches and for me I know that's about um, 14 rounds. I will knit 13 and then switch and then you'll, you, when you switch colors again, remember you drop that, that um, 14th round off of the needles. So. I'm gonna come back here after I've completed a few more rounds and I'll show you how we've finished the striping and then I'll also show you how to carry, um, carry the yarn up the side. So you're just gonna wanna twist it every, I don't know, three, four, five rounds, whatever you're comfortable with, um, twist it along the side. Now, if you're the person who does wanna cut the yarn, go ahead, whatever you feel like doing. This is just a technique I use um, when I'm knitting stripes. So I just wanted to make sure I show you guys how to do that. So I'll see you back here in a little bit. All right, so I have knit a few more rounds of my second color and I'm gonna show you how to wrap the yarn to carry it up the side. I mean, I, I like some people are really formal about this. I basically just wrap the yarn around each other, like wrap the two colors around each other. So basically we wanna take the yarn that we're not using and the yarn that we are using and wrap them. I mean, you basically wanna make sure that um, it's wrapped around once and then you just keep knitting. Um, you know, don't complicate it. Um, I wanted to show you what this is looking like. We kind of avoided that jog by slipping that first stitch of the second round. So that just helps to keep the stripe kind of even instead of it being um, like have a, a jog up and down. <laughs> Don't know another way to say it. Um, so I'm gonna keep knitting and then every couple of rounds I'm going to twist the yarn in the back to carry it up the side. And you just wanna make sure you've got it kind of loose, it's not pulling. Um, and then you can decide how many rounds you like to twist it to keep it going. Um, you probably don't wanna wait a full four inches um, of stripe before you twist. I would say at a minimum do it 
once and then ideally two or three times up the side. So that's what you do to carry the yarn up the side. Again, if you feel more comfortable just cutting the yarn um, because the stripes are so thick, feel free. But that's just a good way, a good method to learn to carry the yarn up the side if you're doing stripes. So I'm going to continue on wrapping the yarn. I'm going to continue on completing um, just knit rounds of the second color until I am just under four inches. So for me, I know that's about 13 rounds. So I'm going to complete 13 rounds. I have four. I'm on my fourth round now. So um, I will meet you back here towards the end and I'll show you how to switch back to our first color and knit the last stripe under the underarm. So I will see you then. All right, so I am just under four inches that I've knit in my color two. Um, and the reason I am just under four, inch, four inches is because you have to remember when you switch colors, you're gonna end up with one more round. So for me, this was 13 rounds and um, I will knit um, that last round off when I switch colors. So we're gonna get to the end of the round here. Here's my stitch marker. I'm gonna knit to one stitch before the stitch marker. And then I am going to twist the yarn. You can see I've brought it up the back of the work here. Um, I'm going to twist the yarn so that tension is ready. And even though I'm still knitting with this, even though I'm still knitting with my primary color, with this, with this color too, this cream color, now when I slip the marker and I'm ready to switch colors, this yarn is, is um, it helps with the tension. It helps to make sure that the tension is good. So. That's how I like to switch colors. So now we've switched our colors and we are knitting with our first color that we started with. All right, so you're gonna wanna continue on knitting in the round in this next color for another just under four inches and you can continue to wrap the yarn every couple of rows up the back um, like that if you would like or you can just cut the yarn and start with a new end every time you switch the colors. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. There's no one way to do something um, a lot of times in knitting. So I'm gonna continue around here and I will meet you back here when I am finished knitting my 13th round or just under four inches in my second color. One quick thing I just wanted to remind you as you finish your first round and you start your second round, don't forget to slip that very first stitch purl wise to help prevent jogging in the stripes. You can see our slip stitch before helped us to prevent that jogging in the stripes. So just a quick reminder. All right, I'll see you back here when we've knit almost four inches of our first primary color. So that'll be of this gray color. All right, so now I am at the point where I have completed my bottom ribbing and uh, um, everything up to the point of the underarms of the sweater. So we've been knitting in the round and now we are going to knit back and forth across just half of the work to do the back stitches. So we're gonna work the back stitches um, and the back stitches are on this side and the front stitches are on this side. So before, instead of starting a new round um, going across, we are gonna move the front stitches off of the circular needle so we can work easily back and forth on the back. So, um, I am going to show you how to do that, how to move the front stitches off of the needles. So I have a piece of waist yarn that's pretty long that will fit um, that will fit the entire width of the sweater plus some more. You want to make sure you have a long enough piece of waist yarn to hold half of the sweater. 
So um, you can see here's the marker. I'm going to slip the marker off. And I did just wrap that last stitch of the cream, so I will be able to pick that up easily and knit the back. Um, just wanted to let you know that. But to, I'm going to slip this stitch marker off. And we are going to move these front stitches to this waist yarn. And we do that simply by picking the stitches off of the needle and on to the waist yarn. And we do this all the way across half of the work. So you're going to do this until you get to that stitch marker that we put on to denote um, half of the stitches. So we're just dividing the work into the front and the back now. And then when we get ready to work the front, we'll move these stitches back onto our circular needle so we can work back and forth. All right, so I'm working to that purple marker. And then I'm going to slip the marker off, set that aside. And then I'm just going to kind of pull the yarn through and take the needle off and stretch this yarn across. And this is probably the first time you'll get to see how big the sweater is because it's been bunched up a little bit on the needles. Um, but yeah, just make sure you have enough um, yarn on either side so that the stitches don't slip off. Okay, so we slipped off the stitches for the front. And now we just have stitches on our work for the back. So we're going to work back and forth now, flat on the circular needles. We're not working in the round anymore for the body. So you work the back, back and forth, and then the front. And we'll do the neckline shaping, and then we will seam it all together at the top. So I'm going to get my work ready, and we just finished that gray color, the first color, color one. I'm actually going to snip the yarn right now just because um, I'm not going to carry the yarn up the side. I will just weave these in later. So I'm going to snip this and we're going to switch to this second color now, which is the cream color for me. And we're simply going to work back and forth for the same number of rows. So for me, that's around 13 rows. And you can kind of tug on the yarn a little bit to get the gauge correct. So I'm going to work back and forth um, for 14, well, 13 rows. And then once I switch colors again, that'll give me my 14th row. So you're going to work this color and then for four inches and then your back to your first color for four inches. So instead of continuing to knit, you'll be purling and then knitting, purling and then knitting. We're on the back of the work and then we'll be on the right side of the work. All right. All right. So I am um, at just under four inches. So for me, that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 rows of my second color for the back and I'm actually going to snip the yarn here leave a little tail so I can weave it in and I am going to join on the wrong side because that's just where I ended up ending um, for my four inches you can end after a wrong side row or after a right side row it doesn't matter because you can just join um, you can just join the next color on, on any side. So um, I am just going to join and start purling. I'm just going to tighten the yarn there a little bit. And then I am going to continue this until I am just under four inches again. And this, that'll be where we end the top of the back. So I will meet you back here once I have finished knitting this color for about four inches. So now I am finishing my last row 
of my second color on the top of the back. And I am going to now bind off. So um, this is also where I wanted to stop and just kind of show you where we are with everything. Um, okay, so this is the back and this is where it connects. Yeah, let's see here. All right, so if for some reason you want your armholes to be deeper than eight inches, because we are making the armholes as big as two stripes and each stripe is, is four inches. So if you want your armholes to be bigger than four inches, here's the time to add length to the top. If you wanted to add a few more rows, to the top, that won't make the sweater look off at all. I think a little bit more height on the top um, won't really make that much of a difference if you wanted a little bit more room in the armholes. Just remember that that will add to the overall length of the sweater. So if you were going for a certain length from the underarm, just know that you, you're gonna be adding length. So it'll be longer than, um, than the 13 inches plus eight inches. It'll be longer than 21 inches from the top of the shoulder or to the bottom. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so also I wanted to note, I did one extra row, so I ended after a wrong side row, so I could bind off on the right side of the work. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, rows that I actually completed already. So I'll be binding off on the 15th row there. So um, I just like to bind off on the right side. I'm gonna bind, do a regular bind off and then I'm gonna seam the shoulders. Now there's lots of different ways you can seam shoulders. You could transfer all these stitches onto a piece of scrap yarn and do a three needle bind off um, for those who know how to do that. But to keep things simple and straightforward, I am going to do just a regular bind off. I'm gonna try to bind off a little loosely here. So you knit one stitch, knit the second stitch, and then move the first stitch over that second stitch you just knit. And you keep repeating that all the way across to the end. So you only have two stitches on the needle and then you bind off one so you, you have one stitch. So this is a way to bind off and again make sure it's not real tight. You want to bind off um, kind of loosely. I mean, not really loose, but um, loose enough here. And again, there are many different ways you can seam shoulders. You could do a three needle bind off, but then you would have to, whoops, then you would have to move all of these stitches to um, a piece of scrap yarn and um, bind off or, and then bind off one shoulder, bind off the center, and then bind off the other shoulder that way. Um, and I just figured I would keep things simple and just show you a regular bind off, and then we can seam the shoulders. So I'm gonna continue doing this all the way across, and I will meet you at the end. All right, so I am almost at the end of this row, binding off. I'll just show you what it looks like to finish binding off. And then once we get to the end, the last stitch, you can just simply snip a tail here and pull the yarn through. And now we have finished one side of the sweater. We have totally finished the back of the sweater. Um, and you can see that we've got three stripes of our first color, five inches, four inches, four inches, and then we've got four inches and four inches up here. So five, four, four, and then um, eight inches at the underarm. One other thing I wanted to note is that it's good to do an extra row at the top because we'll be seaming and when you seam, um, you'll be um, overlapping a little bit. So that just helps to give it a little extra length once we seam at the top. All right, so now we are going to start working the front. So we had all of these stitches on a piece of scrap yarn. So now we need to remove the scrap yarn 
and put our stitches back on our long circular needle. So to do that, basically, this is how I do it. Um, I just start sticking my needle through the end and you, I'm working from left to right because we want to end up over here. It doesn't really matter because when you have a circular needle, you can just kind of pull everything through and reorient which side you're working on. But um, this is how I just like to do it. And um, this yarn is kind of nice because I can, there's still enough room for the needle and the scrap yarn, but you can start pulling it through if you would like, if you don't want to have everything on the needle, just make sure you don't drop stitches as you're picking it up. But um, I tend to just kind of pull everything through at the end. So you'll continue across putting these stitches back on the long circular needle and then you'll begin working that side. So I will meet you at the end of this row. All right, so I've got one more stitch to pick up here from the waist yarn. All right, and now I'm just gonna kind of pull that waist yarn through, making sure the other end is still on the needle so I don't drop any stitches. All right, so now I am ready to start the front. And I, we just finished the gray color, the first color. So now I'm going to start knitting back and forth with my cream color, which is my second color. So we're gonna do another full four inches of the cream striping, the color two striping, and then we will move to the next shaping. So you don't need to worry about the next shaping in this next section. So go ahead and start knitting. Go ahead and start knitting your second color. And then once we near the end, I'll show you, um, I'll come back and then I'll show you how to switch the colors again and then we'll do a few more rows and then we'll start the neck shaping in our other color. So this is straightforward at the moment. We're just gonna knit about four inches again of the second color strip. All right, so I will see you back here at the end of this stripe. So I have just finished the um, section of this cream color on the front. So we have the back finished and I've got the first stripe finished on the front of this cream color. I am going to um, begin. So this is where we're gonna start the neckline after we knit a few rows in our first color. And this will be the color of um, around the neckline and it will be the color of the collar. So it doesn't matter if you join on the right side or the wrong side at this point. So I just happen to be on the right side. So I am going to join on the right side. And then I'm only going to knit two rows before I begin the neckline. When you start the neckline, you wanna make sure you are ending after a wrong side row so you will start knitting on the right side. So I am just going to knit two rows of this color and then um, I will walk you guys through how to start shaping for the neckline. All right, I'll see you back here at the end of two rows. You basically want it to be like two or three rows um, just to get you on the right side. So if you start joining on the backs on the wrong side, um, you're gonna just wanna make sure you um, knit two rows so you can start on the right side. So basically just a few rows to get you um, after a wrong side row. So I'll see you back here after two rows. All right guys, I have finished knitting two rows of my first color, okay? And now it's time to shape the neckline. And I just wanted to explain kind of overall um, how shaping the neckline works. So you can either choose to do it with me the same way 
or do it differently or modify it or modify it and figure out how to do it based on um, the width of stitches that you have cast on. All right, so basically the neckline, we shape the neckline by um, knitting across a certain amount of stitches and then we're just gonna work this left front, okay? And we'll decrease and then we'll work straight and bind off. Then we will join at the neckline here and we are going to bind off across um, some stitches here and then we will work some decreases and then work straight on the end for the right side, okay? So that's how that works. So now I'm gonna talk numbers. So basically the neck is a straight line and then a V out, okay? So the bind off stitches in the middle go across 16 stitches, all right? And then we're gonna decrease four stitches on one side and four stitches on the other side. So 16 plus four plus four is 24 stitches. So our neckline is worked across 24 stitches, all right? But we only need, when we start working this front, when we start working the left front here, um, this is the left front and this is the right front because when you wear it, this side is on the left and this side is on the right. So that just gives you an idea of how wide I have the neckline, 16 plus four plus four stitches across 24 stitches. So if you wanna make it wider, I suggest binding off more than 16 stitches at the neckline. Make it bigger this way. That's just an easier way to, to do it instead of figuring out the decreases because you need to make sure you have enough room for the decreases if you do more than four decreases. So basically, I cast on I cast it on 60 stitches and all I need to do to figure out how many stitches to work across to get to the point um, where I need to stop and work back and forth for this left front is to subtract 16 from 60. So 16 from 60 is 44. So 44 stitches, then I need to divide that by two. So that's 22 stitches that I need to work across. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. And then I will bind off 16, and then we're gonna have 22 stitches over here. So do the math and figure out if you've cast on 60 stitches, you're fine, you're working across the same amount. Um, I don't really suggest going smaller, too much smaller on the neckline. Um, you really wanna make sure you have enough room. This isn't a humongous neckline. So even if you're casting on smaller stitches or even if you're casting on a little bit more stitches, I recommend doing the same size neckline. I only recommend changing the, the, the neckline if you're, if you're making a very large sweater and you, want it, and you wanna make the neck a little bit bigger. So, Figure out how many stitches you want to bind off in the middle. I recommend 16. And then figure out how many stitches then you'll need on each side based on how many stitches you cast on. So as you realize, as, as I said before, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 stitches. I'm going to work across 22 stitches. And then um, we'll work back and forth for this left front. All right, um, I will also take these stitches off once I get to the end here, so we can just work back and forth for the front, okay? So I'm gonna now knit across 22 stitches. One, two, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So you can just double check your math, make sure it's the same number here as you'll have on the other side if you cast off 16 stitches, okay? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I should have 22 on this side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Okay? So now we're just going to be working back and forth for this left front. So if you would like, you can move those stitches, the rest of the stitches over here, to scrap yarn so you don't get confused now if or if you would like you can put a stitch marker on here right now um and just work back and forth with these stitches on i'm just gonna take them off so you guys don't get confused if you are a little more advanced and you're used to working back and forth with other stitches on your circular needle feel free to keep them on all right so once i get these off i will meet you back here and I'll show you how to shape for the neckline. All right, so I have moved all of these stitches. We're gonna bind off and do the um, right front later, but now we're just gonna work back and forth on the left front. So we've knit across, and now we're gonna turn the work and just purl all the way back, okay? So go ahead and do that. We're going to purl all the way back. All right, and once we get to the end of, of those 22 stitches, now we're on the front of the work, the right side of the work. So in this row, because um, the end is at our neckline, we are going to start decreasing. And we're gonna decrease one stitch in. So we are gonna pick up stitches along the neckline um, to do the collar and when we pick up stitches, we're going to leave an extra stitch. So when you um, decrease, we're going to decrease at the point where there are three stitches left on the end. So I'll show you what I mean. So we are going to knit to three stitches before the end. And once, once we've knit to the point where we've got three stitches left, we're simply going to knit two together, okay? And then you can see that we have kind of a right slant on our stitches, so that'll shape the neckline going out to the right. And then when we go the other direction, on the other side of the neckline, we're gonna make our stitches decrease towards the left, so the neckline goes out that way. So, um, again, the reason I designed it this way so that when we go back and we pick up our stitches, you'll see this nice slant and you'll insert the needle to pick up stitches um, here after that first stitch and then that nice slant will be right on the edge where our stitches are picked up. So then once you are done with that first decrease row, we're just simply going to purl back, okay? And we're going to repeat this three more times so we have four stitches decrease so that we will go from 22 stitches to 18 stitches on this side and then we will bind off. So I've decreased one stitch and now I need to decrease three more times. So I'll show you again how to do this as we keep going back and forth. So we are always decreasing on the right side of the work 
and we're decreasing three stitches to the end. So I'm on the right side of the work and now I am just going to knit till I have three stitches towards the end. And this applies to however many stitches you've got on the needle at this point, right? So if you have more or less stitches than me, just knit to three stitches before the end. And you're just decreasing one stitch every row. All right, so I'm at the point where I have three stitches left and I'm going to knit two stitches together. So you insert the needle through both stitches, yarn over and pull through. And then we simply knit the last stitch. And now that you, we have two decreases going, you can kind of see that nice slant um, that'll be along the neckline. Okay, so we're gonna purl back. Turn the work, we're on the right side of the work. Now we're gonna knit to three stitches to the end again. Now we've got three stitches left, we're gonna do that knit two together. And then we're gonna knit one. Okay, so now we have three decreases. Look how nice that's looking. Okay, we're gonna purl back. And we have one more decrease row that we need to do after this. Flip the work. And now we will complete our last decrease row. We're gonna knit to three stitches to the end. Now we're gonna do that knit two together to de decrease the stitch and get us to slant to the right and then we knit one. All right, so now we are at the point two, four, six, eight. I have 10 rows showing here and I usually get to about 14 for my four inches and I'm gonna add row to account for the seaming so it matches the back. If you have one or two rows difference from the back, don't worry about it. Just make sure it's at least even on both sides of the front. Um, so I am gonna keep knitting four more rows and then I will bind off and I'll show you guys once I bind off. So we are done with the decreases. Now we're just gonna purl, knit, Pearl knit. We're just going to keep going straight stuck in that until it's time to bind off until we get to our four inches. Okay, okay, so now I'm at the point where I am going to bind off. So again, we should have 18 stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, or however many stitches you should have at the end of binding off four stitch or decreasing four stitches. Um, and I like to end after a wrong side row, so I'm binding off on the right side. You don't have to, this is just the way I like to do it. Um, so I am going to start binding off this left front. I knit two stitches and then slip that first stitch over that second stitch. And I'm gonna continue that all the way across until I have bound off all of the stitches Again, try not to bind off too tight here. You're gonna be seaming these stitches together to the back. So we're gonna um, seam the fronts to the back over the shoulder using um, a tapestry needle. And you just work your way across here. All right, I've got one stitch left here. So I am just going to cut this and pull that through. And then we have finished our left front. So we've shaped the neckline and knit a few rows of stockinette and then bound off. So now we're gonna start this front neckline. And the first thing we need to do is to put 
our stitches back on the needle. So I'm gonna start over here and put all these stitches back on the needle. All right, so we have our stitches back on the circular needle. We have finished our left side. Now we are going to bind off 16 stitches for the front neckline or however many stitches you originally calculated. Then we will work back and forth for the right front, decreasing four stitches every other row and then working stack on that straight to our desired length. So join your, your yarn again at the neckline and then we are binding off 16 stitches. So, or however many stitches you need to bind off. So we join the work and knit two stitches and then we're gonna start binding off. So that's one, binding off one stitch, two, three, four, 15, 16. Now you will have a stitch left on your needle, okay? And we wanna make sure we have the same amount of stitches that we originally had before we decreased on this side. So it should be a total, including this stitch, 22 stitches. So one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 total. Don't forget to count this stitch that you will still have on your right needle from binding off. So I have 21 stitches here and one stitch here. So I have a total of 22 stitches. Now again, I am decreasing four stitches to get me to 18 to match the final number of stitches I had on this side. So I am just simply gonna knit to the end of this row. All right, we're gonna turn the work and we are gonna purl to the end of this row. All right. We're gonna turn the work. All right, so now we're at the point where we need to decrease around the neckline. And because we're on the other side, we're gonna be decreasing after this first stitch and we need the work to slant the other way. So we're gonna do a slip, slip knit. So we knit one and then to decrease, we slip, slip, and then knit those two stitches together. And now we have a slant going that way around the neckline. And then you just knit to the end. And we repeat that three more times. All right, turn the work and purl to the end. Purling all the way to the end. And then we're gonna turn the work back. We've worked one decrease at the neckline. And now we're gonna work our second decrease at the neckline by knitting one and then doing a slip, 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 slip knit. So you slip, one, not like that. So to work a slip, slip knit, slip the stitch as if to knit slip the stitch as, to knit, as if you, you were to knit, and then you're gonna stick your left hand needle back through those, those stitches you just slipped, yarn over, and pull through both stitches. That is a slip slip knit, and then you just knit to the end. All right, I've knit to the end. We're gonna turn the work and purl back. Curl to the end, turn the work, and now we're gonna work our third decrease here by knitting one, slip, slip, knit. And then knitting to the end. We're basically mirroring 
what we did on the other side. It just requires us to do decreases at the beginning of the row instead of the end of the row. And it also requires us to have our slants going the other direction. So instead of knitting two together, we're doing a slip slip knit. And then we're gonna purl to the end. Now we're gonna turn our work and do our final decrease. Knit one, slip, slip, knit, and then knit to the end. All right, I just finished knitting to the end. We've bound off four stitches, so I should have 18 stitches, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 stitches left. And now I'm gonna continue on just as I did on this side and bind off for the right for the right front. So go ahead and finish stockinette and bind off and I will meet you back here when it's time to seam the shoulders. And one thing I wanted to mention, I'm almost done binding off here. I continued in stockinette stitch to meet the same length as the other side. Leave a long enough strand that you can use to um, use to, to stitch back and seam the shoulders. So I am gonna leave a fair amount of yarn here for seaming. And that way we can use yarn that's already attached to seam the shoulders. All right. So now we're gonna get ready to seam the shoulders. We've made the left front and the right front, and the neckline might look really big right now, but don't worry. Once we start seaming it together and, and start picking up stitches um, for the neckline, it'll come together and won't be seam as big. So because I ended up with the yarn on this side, I am going to do this side first and all right so we are going to line up the front and the back of the work and I am going to do the right front first and basically I am going to thread my tapestry needle and get ready to seam so I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. So basically, what you're gonna wanna do is connect the sides first, so you line it up. And I usually just kind of run the yarn through the outside to connect them. And then, there's a couple different ways to seam, but what I like, the way I like to do it is I like to find the bottom of the V. It's just easier for me to see this visually for some reason. So I, let's make sure you guys can see this. So we've got a V going, it's like an upside down V. Okay, we're gonna stick the needle through the V there. And then we're gonna find the same V, the first V on this side upright. So this V is upright and this V is up is like an upside down V and now we're going to find the next one. So it was through that one and now we're going to go through and now we're going to go through this one. And we're going to continue that all the way across. So I'm going to go through bottom of the V there. All right, and it'll start seaming together. And basically we're doing this in a way that um, will line up the stitches in a way that looks pretty seamless. See? So I went through, you can see the yarn went through that V. Now I'm gonna go through this V up here and 
the yarn came up from here, so I'm going to go through this V here. And you can start to see that it looks like we're continuing the stitch. We're creating, we're basically weaving through one side and the other to make it look like it's a continuous stitch. So it's an upside down V on the bottom and a regular V on the top. So you can start to see that coming together. I'm going to continue this all the way across to the end. All right, we're nearing the end here. I'm going to go through the last couple of stitches. I'm going, going to go through the last V here on either side. And then I'm just going to end it on the inside here. And you can see we have seamed our shoulder. So I am going to remove the tapestry needle and then you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the other shoulder. Line it up and seam the front and the back together. And I will meet you back here to then work the collar. One thing I wanted to note, when you start working um, to seam this other side, make sure you start on the end and work in. Because if you start here, you have to guess exactly where to start. So start on the outside and work your way into All right, so I just finished seaming the left shoulder. All right, so now it's starting to really look like a sweater. So we've got our armholes, we've got our neckline, um, and now I'm gonna show you how to pick up stitches and complete the collar. All right, I'm gonna show you how to pick up stitches for the collar. So I have um, a nine millimeter, 24 inch needle I'm gonna use um, just because the stitches will be spread out a little bit more. You don't have to use a 24 inch. You could use your 16 inch if you wanted, but if you do have a 24 inch or you have um, adjustable needles, um, feel free to use that. So we're going to start on the back, in the middle of the back, picking up stitches. So we're going to start and end on the back. And I'm going to make sure I have my stitch marker handy. And we're going to begin picking up stitches on the back and going around. So, you know, get to the center. It doesn't need to be precisely the exact center. But this is how I pick up stitches. I like to insert my needle through both stitches here. And so you find where you've bound off and you're going to want to insert the right hand needle through the bars, two bars of the stitches where you've bound off. And you're going to take your yarn, weave it over, and the first stitch can be a little wonky, but you're going to want to pull that stitch through so you've got a loop. All right. So we've got this kind of hanging here. We've got where we're working from and we're going to continue through each. See how there's a V? We're going to continue through each V across picking up a stitch. So you insert your needle, yarn over, and this is picking up this is considered picking up and knitting because we're adding a stitch. This is abbreviated as P-U-K, picking up and knitting. So we're going to continue this all the way across here. And this is 
the back of the work. We're going to work across picking up stitches through the back until we get to that shoulder. All right. There's different ways, I just wanted to note too, there's different ways of picking up stitches. Some people only go through the front bar, some people go through under here. This is just how I like to pick up a knit um, on a bound off edge. All right. All right, so we've finished picking up stitches along the back, half of the back. Now we're at the left neckline. Okay, and we're gonna work the, the left neckline until we get to the bottom of the neckline, which looks like those same Vs that we just bound off. But along the left neckline, we don't wanna pick up a stitch for every single stitch. We are going sideways. So basically our work is going like this and we're picking up stitches along the side and it's not a one for one ratio. You'll have too many stitches. So we are gonna pick up four stitches for every five rows along the left neckline. So I like to do that by going like this. So we're gonna find that V again along the side and we're gonna insert our needle. We're gonna insert the needle through that first stitch, okay? That first bar and pull up again. So it's one, two, three, skip a stitch, skip a stitch, four. I just wanted to show you that's four stitches for every five rows along the side. And I'll now show you a little bit more slowly how I'm picking up the stitches and where the needle's going in. So there's the back of the work. And it's basically like that very last stitch, we're going through that last stitch. And you can see our nice V where we decreased, our nice slant here. We're working just in front of that, in that front stitch. So we just did four stitches, so we count. We go into the very next stitch. One, two, three, skip a stitch, Four. So that's four stitches for every five rows. We're going to do the same until we get all the way down to that front neckline. One, two, three, oops, three, skip a stitch, four. So this is, it actually worked out pretty well here. I'm pretty much at the point where I am going to connect to that front neckline. All right, and so we are going to connect the bottom and go through that first stitch there. Don't go in picking up a lot of stitches around that inside corner. Um, you might be inclined to pick up this stitch right here, but try to avoid that. Um, this makes for a neater seam here from when you join the left neckline and the bottom neckline. Okay, so we're gonna insert and pick up this first stitch. So now, since we're in the front and we're working alongside in the same direction, we're gonna pick up every stitch along that lower neckline. So we do the same thing. We're gonna go into every stitch along the bottom there. So I am almost at the end of that front neckline here. And now I'm gonna work four stitches for every five rows up that right neckline. All right, so I'm just figuring out where I am here. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna pick up this stitch. One, two, can be hard to see, three, 
skip a stitch, four, three, skip a stitch, You know what, I'm kind of at the end. I'm where it's kind of seaming there. So I'm gonna actually go, not skip a stitch. I'm gonna go into that, that last stitch instead of skipping. And then I'm gonna start picking up the back. So now we're at the, the other side of the back. Inside, and now we're gonna pick up every stitch along the back here. And then we're gonna join in the round. All right, we're nearing the end of the neckline where we're picking up stitches. I'm gonna pause here like four spaces, four stitches or so before the end because I'm gonna see how I'm doing with the number of stitches and if they're even or odd. And remember, we wanna end with an even number of stitches because we're gonna be doing knit one, purl one. So I'm just gonna count here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 60, 62 stitches I've got so far. So um, I am just gonna pick up two more stitches before I join in the round. Um, one, two, um, and then I'm gonna join in the round here. And so I've got 60, about 64 stitches. So you want somewhere around there, you know, 60 or so, between 60 and 64 um, to join in the round. I am going to slip the stitch from the left side over to the right, slip the stitch over from the right back to the left. I'm gonna twist that left stitch, place the slip marker, the stitch marker in between those two stitches. And now I'm gonna start knitting and purling, doing a rib stitch all the way around. So knit one stitch, purl one stitch. And I want to note how I'm picking up the stitches. So the way I pick up stitches, this first round, I will need to insert the needle in the stitches the other way so they are not twisted. So I just did a purl. So instead of inserting the needle this way, I'm gonna insert the needle this way so the stitch is not twisted. So that's just for the first round. That's knit, same way with purling, purl. I just wanna show you this. If I did insert the needle this way, the stitch would be twisted. All right, so on this very first round, you're gonna to wanna to go in the reverse way to the stitches. so the stitches aren't twisted as you pick them up here. Purl, knit, purl. So you continue this all the way around, knit, purl, knit, purl. And um, I kind of like a high collar on the sweater. You can go as long as you would like and bind off if you don't want such a high collar, but I'm gonna go for around four inches and continue kind of that same length we've been working with with the stripes and on the bottom ribbing. So um, I will show you how this is look, looking after a few rounds, but um, do what you would like, but just note that for a higher collar, I would work around four right, inches. So I am just finishing my first round of the knit one, purl one on the collar. I'm just confirming I have 64 stitches. Um, so again, try to be around that same number. Um, it doesn't need to be exact, but you know, anywhere between 60, 66 stitches, I think is fine. Um, so then you just slip the marker and then you just continue knitting normally into um, the stitch. So we just did it a little differently um, after we picked up and knitted the first round of stitches going in backwards to the loops. And now we can just do our knit one purl one rib for our collar for about four inches. So 
Um, again, you can continue on to any length you would like. I just wanted to show you what the collar is looking after about six rounds. So if you didn't want the collar to be real high, now might be a good time to bind off. But I am going to continue on and making the collar higher. All right, so I'm nearing the end of my final round of my collar, and then I'm going to start binding off. So I'm going to remove the stitch marker and start binding off. And just a word of warning to bind off loosely if you use this method. Again, there's lots of different methods to bind off. Um, I find this is the easiest. I like the way this looks, but you do have to be very careful making sure you're not binding off too tightly or it'll be hard to get your head through the sweater. So just go slow and make sure you're binding off pretty loosely all the way across. So you're binding off in the knit one, purl one rib. So you continue knitting and purling as you would, but you're also binding off along the way. We'll be doing the same method for our sleeves. All right, I am nearing the end, ooh, nearing the end of binding off here. I'm gonna bind off one more stitch purl stitch, slip that over, and then I'm gonna cut the yarn, and I'm gonna show you how to weave this in and finish off um, the collar. Just do this right now. Um, I usually like go back in that first stitch I bound off and kind of weave back in um, this way. And then I go back in and then I follow um, a, um, a stitch down like this. And weave it in this way. Again, lots of different ways to weave in, lots of different ways to end things. This is just kind of how I do it. And then I snip the yarn. And then we just finished our collar. All right, so the collar is finished and now we're gonna move on to the sleeve. All right, for the sleeve you're gonna wanna take your um, US 13 9 millimeter 16 inch circular needle and um, pick whatever sleeve you want to start with. I'm going to start with the right sleeve and we're going to start picking up stitches at the underarm. Um, if you're following along with the same color pattern, you're going to want to make sure you have your first color, color one, in which case, in, in my case, it is this gray color. I have it as the same color as we as the collar. So we're gonna pick up the same amount of stitches along the side that we did for the collar. So that's four stitches for every five rows. And again, your collar, your um, sleeve, the number of stitches you pick up for the sleeve might be a tad different. Maybe you have longer armholes, um, but we're gonna start on the side here and pick up um, kind of the same way as we did before can be a little tricky to figure out where to start. I'm gonna start right here, insert the needle, and just go one, two, three, skip a stitch, four, one, two, three, skip a stitch, four, three, skip a stitch, four. All right, I'm nearing the top seam here. Just be careful um, that you kind of stay on the outside edge here. So that was four. This gets a little thick because I'm on the outside of the work. 
I'm gonna kind of pick up a stitch in the middle here. So now I'm gonna start here. One, two, three, skip a stitch, four, stitch four. Now we're nearing the end here um, and I'm gonna check my stitch count here and then make up um, any stitches I need towards the end here. Two, four, six, eight, 44, 46, 48, 49 stitches. So I'm gonna pick up one more stitch to make it an even 50 here. All right, and then we're gonna join in the round and then just knit four inches in the round in this color. So I'm gonna join in the round here, twist my stitches, place the stitch marker, and start knitting in the round. Now remember, we just picked up stitches, so for this first round, we're gonna to wanna to insert our needle you can pull the yarn a little bit to tighten it up if you need to. We're gonna insert the needle um, this way into the yarn because we just picked up stitches. For this first round, you'll wanna do that. All right, so you might have a little bit different stitch count than me. It's fine, I would say anything between 44 and 54 stitches, you know, if you want to have more or less. Okay, just make sure, um, you know, you're picking up around the same stitches every four stitches for f four stitches for every five rows um, if you have too many stitches the sleeves will balloon out a lot if you don't if you have a lot less stitches um, the armhole gap might really shrink and it the armhole might not um, be big enough for, for you so just keep that in mind um, you know, have around 50 stitches, give or take. Try to have an even number. If you don't have an even number, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't really matter. Just You're just gonna wanna make sure you're picking up the same amount of stitches for the other sleeve on the other side. Um, and then when we're gonna reduce stitches for the cuff, I'll show you how we do that. So you're gonna wanna continue around for four inches um, on this first color. All right, so I knit four inches of this first color. I have joined um, my second color, this cream color, and I'm gonna keep knitting my sleeve for another four inches. So you're gonna keep doing this. You're gonna do four inches of your first color, four inches of your second color, and then another four inches of your third color. And then I will meet you back. You might wanna try on the sweater at that point to see where the sleeve is hitting you. So you can gauge how you wanna finish the final, the final section of the sweater, um, of the sleeve. So meet me back after you've done 12 inches. So four inches of the first color, four inches of the second color, and then four inches of the first color again. Um, meet me back here after 12 inches and I will show you how to um, adjust the sleeve length based on how long you want it and then how to reduce for the cuff. All right, I am at the point where I have finished one, two, three stripes on my sleeve. So that's about 12 inches. And I know personally from trying on the sweater that I want the sleeve to be um, around 17-ish, maybe 17 and a half inches. So I am gonna knit just over an inch of this cream color because I know my ribbing will be four inches. So try the sweater on, figure out how much longer you wanna go. Um, so I'm gonna knit another inch and then do another five inches or so. I'm sorry, I'm gonna knit another inch and then um, the ribbing for the um, sleeve cuff will be another four inches. So adjust accordingly if you wanna go longer, shorter, you know, add that space here before the sleeve cuff. If you follow the sleeve cuff for four inches, you know this is the point here, this little section before we um, start the ribbing will be where you can kind of adjust the length. So I'm gonna knit about an inch here, maybe a little bit more um, 
And then we're gonna do one decrease round before the cuff, so make sure you take that into account. All right. I just finished knitting about an inch of this cream color, and now we're gonna start the decrease row for the cuff. And the decrease row is simply knit two together, knit two together, knit one. Knit two together, knit two together, knit one. And then when you get towards the end of the round, you need to stop and make sure you have an even number of stitches so that you can move into the one by one rib accurately. You need an even number of stitches to do the one by one rib. So it's knit two together, knit two together, knit one. Okay, so we're going from five stitches to three stitches. And then we continue that all the way around. Knit two together, knit two together, knit one. All right, and once you get towards the end, I would say once you get to the point where you have around three stitches left, count your stitches. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22, 24, 26, I have 28 stitches and I need to get to the point where I have an even number but I have three stitches left. So I am just going to decrease one more time. So that's 29, 30 stitches, okay? So just try to make sure you end up with an even number of stitches. Then you're just gonna simply wanna knit one round, all right? knit one round, and then we're gonna start the one by one. All right, I'm nearing the end of that knit round after the decrease, and now we're at the beginning of the sleeve, so now we're simply going to knit one, purl one, do the one by one rib for four inches, and then we'll bind off as we normally bind off. All right, so I'll meet you back here after we've completed for the, the one by one rib for four inches. All right, I have completed the one by one rib for the cuff for about four inches. And now we're gonna bind off and finish off the work just as we did with the collar. So we're gonna bind off in the one by one rib. So knit one, purl one, slip that first stitch over the one you just Purled, knit one, bind off one, purl one, bind off one. All right, so I just finished binding off in the one by one rib for my sleeve cuff and I wove in my end. And now you'll just need to complete the second sleeve by picking up stitches, the same amount of stitches, finishing the sleeve the exact same way as you did your first sleeve. And then you'll just want to weave in the rest of the ends for your sweater and you'll be complete.